Hi everybody, I'm David Zeiser and I think I've got quite a treat for you today. I recently sat down with my good friend Dave Cross of Photoshop fame and we discussed his upcoming Lightroom Virtual Summit that begins Monday, May 3rd and runs the entire week. He's producing it with Matt Kukowski and both of them have put together a tremendous, uh, a, a tremendous variety of speakers. They have 20 instructors, 40 classes, going to be 30 hours of instruction. So it is going to kind of fill in the whole week next week. He kind of gave us a peek behind the scenes about how it all came together, some of the things they're going to be covering, some of the giveaways, and how everybody can kind of participate in it. So I hope you join Dave and I right now as we talk about Lightroom's Virtual Summit 2021. All right, so hey, I'm happy to be here talking with you today, Dave, and uh, about the new uh, the Lightroom Virtual Summit that's coming up on Monday. I know right. Matt's going to join us here shortly, but can you just give us a? I know, I know, there's the videos out there and the, on the website and everything, but how did this whole concept get started with you? Well, it actually started last year at this time when the just as the pandemic was first upon us, I had previously been playing around with the idea of doing some kind of online event and i'd read about these things called virtual summits where people gathered a group of instructors and what appealed to me was the the way that these summits were structured is the content was available for free and then there was an optional paid version and uh, so we did the very last minute in like literally about two or three weeks, I gathered together a bunch of my instructor friends and we put on the fir first Photoshop virtual summit and it went very well. And we got amazing feedback from people saying, this is just what I needed. You know, I, I either lost my job or I'm not working right now as a photographer. So this is a great time for me to spend learning about Photoshop. So we've, we've done two of the Photoshop virtual summits. And after the last one, I did a, a survey to say, if we were to do some other topic, what would you like to see? And by far, the the biggest response was a photography virtual summit, which I'm still kind of keeping in my back pocket, trying to figure out how that would work, uh, because it's, it's obviously a little more challenging. It's one thing to do a software-based conference is a whole nother thing to talk about photography and have people record videos and things like that. Sure. So Lightroom was a very close second in terms of what people wanted to see. So uh, I, as many people know, I tend to live in the Photoshop world, not very much in the Lightroom world. So when it became clear that Lightroom was a topic that people were interested in, the, my first thought was, well, I happen to be good friends with one of the top, uh, Ill, sorry, Lightroom instructors in the world, which is Matt Kluskowski. So I contacted him and said, how would you like to kind of co-run this thing with me? Meaning he would be the sort of curriculum guy to help pick instructors and set up the classes and I would run the event as I've done the last two. So thankfully he said yes and he put together, we both put together a list of instructors that we thought would be good to, to have and we reached out to them and thankfully just about all of them except for a couple that weren't available uh, said yes, including some that, interestingly enough, I've never even met them because, again, they live in the Lightroom world and tend to do most of their stuff at on things like YouTube. So anyway, we were able to put together a list of 20 really good instructors. And so there's 20 instructors each teaching two classes, so 40 classes spread out over the week. And it's uh, it's come together really, really nicely. And that's really, I looking at the statistic, it's like 30 hours. That's like six six hours a day you're going to be mm -hmm. having the video streaming now. yep yeah every so, hour on the hour there's a, a new class released the classes generally are about 45 minutes uh -huh. uh, and then we take a bit of a break during the lunch hour just so people can <laughs> refresh their brains and <laughs> right. keep going so uh, the classes are released like I said, each hour and the Eastern Daylight time zone. But even if people are in different different time zones, the good news is it doesn't matter because the classes aren't live. They just are released and then they're available for 48 hours. You can watch the recording uh, at any time you want. And at that time, once the 48 hours period is finished, then they go into the VIP area, which is that's the optional uh, paid option. Mm -hmm. And that's where people can watch them for well, basically, as long as they want to get lifetime access to the videos, as well as other extras like uh, instructors have provided notes and there's some bonus material and things like that. I see. OK, well, still, I mean, that 30 hours is still a lot of information to 
to take in. And uh, I, like you say, it you're going to have a brain fry on this thing too <laughs> to get through it all and everything. But but I think it's interesting how you put it together. And I noticed your instructors are really from around the world. It looks like so, you know, yep. uh, Gwen Davis on there and some of the other people and everything. Mm -hmm. So does this have you got any Photoshop or it's all Lightroom? Well, there's a, there's a couple of classes. Like for example, I'm doing two sessions which are talking about how to use Photoshop and Lightroom together. So if you're a Lightroom user who's never dabbled in Photoshop to talk about the both the process of how you move files back and forth, but also some of the ways you can decide. So if you're looking at a an image and you're trying to decide what's the best tool for this problem I'm trying to solve, then that's one of the, the sessions that, that I do. And then I did a, a second one that talks about how you can prepare graphics in Photoshop to use in different ways in Lightroom, including I did an interesting, just the other day actually recorded, I did a photo shoot of a like a food photography sh uh, shoot where I prepared a graphic in Photoshop, which was the cover of a cookbook, which in Lightroom you're able to overlay while you do a tethered shoot. So every time you take the photo, you see it in the context of the graphic elements so you can decide on composition and, and lighting and all those sort of things. So that was really, considering I'm not a food photographer, that was an interesting project for me to do. And I think there's a couple of others. I know Matt touches on Photoshop a little bit on one of his classes. And Rob Sylvan has another class that talks again about the different ways of, of how the two programs can work together. Uh huh. You know, I was thinking, uh, I was going to bring this up before, but you know, for 30 hours, I think the price of the VIP membership is only $99. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty darn reasonable. I think too, was it $3 a video or something? Or yeah, that? it's something like that. And, an and, and the way we structured it was we wanted to make it free because we know there are still people that are, are struggling with, uh, lack of work and things like that, but at the same time, recognize that if you want to have the ability to go back, as, as as we know, many times you'll watch a session, you'll take copious notes, but then you still want have that feeling like, gosh, I feel like I'd like to watch this again <laughs> and again. That's kind of the idea. So the the regular price of the VIP pass is 149, but the, currently there's a VIP, or excuse me, an early bird price up until the start of the conference. So once the conference starts on, uh, well, it's actually noon on Monday to give people a chance to at least watch a few classes, then the price goes up to the, the regular price. But even at 149, it's still a very good deal, I think, for the amount of content that you get. Sure. Yeah, I think it is too. And uh, I'm going to look forward to kind of tuning in myself come Monday morning and kind of see what's going on. What time does it start in the morning? So it starts at 8 a.m. Eastern oh, wow, Daylight okay. Time. Uh, but again, I've had we have had questions coming in from around the world saying, how do I know, I, do I have to get up in the middle of the night to watch it? And the answer is you don't because there's actually no benefit to watching it at that specific time. In other words, it's not a live broadcast, so it's not like you're going to miss something if you're not awake <laughs> when it when it comes. And that's why we made the 48 hour period to allow for different time zones. So you don't have to necessarily, I mean, some people still do, and that's fine to get up in there watching their PJs with their cup of coffee at whatever hour of the day it is. Uh, but there's no need to, because again, that's that's the whole idea of that, that the classes, the free pass allows you to watch every class for that 48 hour period. And that 48 hour period, when does that start ticking from the, the minute you do the first post at eight o'clock? It, it pretty much, uh, it, it's more the end of the day. So if even if the like say the the class that goes live at 8 a.m. would expire 48 hours from then at 5 p.m. So that it's a little technically it's probably a little more than 48 hours, but that was just the easiest way to do it was just say at the close of the day. Uh, so there's there's actually probably a little more than 48 hours if we really did the math. Okay, okay. And uh, when's the end of the day? for each day. So the last class uh, starts at four and the classes are usually around 45 minutes. So that means most days the classes would be ending up by about five, well before 5 p.m. Eastern time. And is this going through all five days of next week? Yep, it goes all the way Monday through Friday. So there's eight classes per day, thus the 40 total classes. <laughs> that's, that's pretty ambitious. <laughs> It really, I mean, the funny thing was that at the very first summit, when I read the typical structure of how people did it saying, you know, you can do it for 
two days or three days or even five days, I was like, well, what the heck? We're going to do it. Let's let's try to to really fill it out. And certainly with topics like Photoshop and Lightroom, it's not like there's a lack of things to talk about. You know, it's not like we ran right. out of topics and went, well, we don't have enough classes to fill. Now, interestingly, one one note, because, of course, I I get to see all the classes come in from all the instructors. One thing that's kind of interesting is there's two or three classes where you look at the name of the class or even the description and they sound maybe a little similar because it talks about workflow. But the difference is this is this photographer's workflow and this is this photographer's workflow. And it's really interesting to see how using the same tool, people take different approaches. You know, one is doing, say, architecture photography and might have a slightly different way of going through and looking at their images and deciding and editing versus someone that does like a food photo shoot, for example. So to me, it's been really interesting to see the different approaches people take to do similar things. I see. And are you going to be talking about any of the plugins? I know one of Matt's videos on a week or two ago, he was talking about noise reduction and he was, you know, talking about some of the plugins that help uh, help along the way. So I don't know how much we're going to be getting into that at all. I think, I mean, there's a little bit. I know uh, Daniel Gregory is doing a very interesting class talking about actually scanning a film using your DSLR. And there's a plugin that apparently works with that one in, in Lightroom. Um, in my class on the where I did the uh, live tethered shoot, I used a, a tool from Tether Tools, a software product that uh, enhances the way that tethering works. Of course, you can tether directly into Lightroom, but this just has some uh, additional benefits. So my guess is that there, I, I know there are no sessions that specifically talk only about plugins, but the chances are various instructors might make reference to add-on tools that they use for whatever project they're working on. I see. Are there are there any special codes of do you get a discount on a plugin that might be discussed or anything like you guys sometimes do on your on your YouTube videos? Right. Um, I'm not aware of any. I think I mean, one of the things that I'm glad you mentioned that because it did remind me to say that we're in the if, if we recall in the good old days when we used to go to in-person events, you used to get that bag of goodies right. that was right. filled with all the coupons and everything. So we're doing a virtual version of that called the the swag bag. It's the, a PDF file that has discounts and offers and freebies and things like that from both instructors and um, vendors and the sponsors. So there, off the top of my head, I don't recall any, but there there could be and there could be instructors that uh, have mentioned that kind of thing in their classes. Okay, so do you have an idea of what's in the swag bag? I guess since you're I mean, basically, it's like I said, each, each instructor and sponsors was given the opportunity to include something. So, for example, there are people that have a discount code off of their presets or courses or an okay. opportunity to download a free collection of presets or, you know, uh, brushes or things of that nature. So it's a nice add on value add on yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. The other thing that's really interesting this time around is Adobe is our main sponsor. And one of the things they're doing this year is anyone who signs up for the free pass and attends at least something. In other words, they go to at least one of the days and watch some of the classes. Every day we're doing a draw and someone's going to win a free year of the photography plan on the Creative Cloud. So if you're already a Creative Cloud a subscriber, they would just extend your plan by a year. So that's a that's a nice little thing that everyone has an opportunity to get. And then it, for people that sign up for the VIP pass, we're put together a little kind of a prize pool of things like one on one consultation with instructors and tether tools is thrown in a, a starter tethering kit. And I think there's a hundred dollar B&H gift card. So anyone who signs up for the VIP pass will also be entered into that separate draw as well. So ways kind to like win the, for, for both. Kind of like what we were doing in our days back in the, the you know, the uh, the door prize time where we had right, that good, exactly. good yep. part of the show and everything, which is yep, good fun. Exactly. So do you see, so I mean, between the, the swag bag, between the chance to win some of the big prizes and everything, I mean, I, I think it'd be kind of, I mean, it sounds like you're at the at a convention someplace only just in, in front of your TV or in front of your monitor. Right. And of course, the, the only other difference is we don't have that nice 
live interaction where you see people that you typically see at conventions and say hello and chat. So right, that's the right. one downside. In fact, we've had a couple of email conversations with the instructors and especially there's a core of instructors that are what I would call the, the usual suspects that you see at all the teaching at all the main events and everyone's kind of lamenting the fact that that's the one thing that's missing is the instructor lounge where, <laughs> where everyone kind of sits around and chats between classes. So that's, uh, and from an attendee standpoint, obviously that's the other difference, but I think it's, it, we're getting very close to an, a virtual version of a conference in the sense of the amount of content that's available and the fact that these other little, you know, bonus goodies, shall we say that, that like you used to get at the live events. Mm -hmm. Do you see, uh, in the future, maybe doing anything like a live event? I know, um, um I know professional photographers of America tried that for their imaging USA. I'm not quite sure how it went, but I hear, you know, I had good feedback from it. So I yeah, hear logistically I it's harder to pull off. Well, it definitely is. And that's, that's the thing. I mean, I'm, my company consists of myself and my wife and she does the financial side, the billing and I do everything else. So uh, when, after the first summit, people will say, next time, why don't you do a whole bunch of live things? I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> so there is one thing that's live actually, and that's B&H Photo twice during the week are doing live events where you can tune in and watch them talk about, for example, one day they'll be talking about uh, more detail about um, tethering and tether tools. And the other day, I've frankly forgotten what the topic is, but it's, I'm sure it's a good one. I think it's... Uh, Loop Deck, which I believe is an add-on product people use with Lightroom. So they'll be demonstrating that and those will be live events where people will have an opportunity to ask questions and things like sure. that. Sure. And you know, and, and long talking about the live thing, I think what Imaging did, they they actually combined videos with live. So it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think, and I'm thinking, you know, just for down the road uh, possibilities is that's one yeah. way to bring you know, mm -hmm. the, the intimate thing with the person that you're looking at watching and so forth. So the interesting thing is Adobe Max uh, did a very similar thing when they did their, when they transitioned to a, an online event last October. And we had, as instructor, I recorded my class, but then they had a live Q&A chat pod. Uh -huh. And mine was, happened to be one of the first classes of the event, just by coincidence. And there they had myself and about four adobe people all ready to man the chat and you know once my class was over it started and we were all sitting there waiting for the first question and we're able to hear each other and the coordinator's like well looks like we have an issue where something's not working i was like that's like the nightmare of organizing <laughs> live events you have everything ready to go and something goes amiss and then then what do you do so you know we we ended up, I think, having like three questions. And I know there were like, you know, 28,000 people watching. So I'm sure there were more than three questions attempting to come in. So that's sure. having had that experience, that's what's kind of making me think, uh, I'd have to think carefully about the the live aspect of it just because of the potential for challenges, for shall we right, say. Right. <laughs> exactly. I remember when we used to do our webinars years ago, you know, we had you know, I was here, then we had somebody writing shotgun on another computer that <laughs> right. was being sure yeah. and somebody else was feeding me questions from the different notes going by. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, I mean, it took two or three people to kind of keep an eye on everything. Right, but, exactly. And, and I think when you amp it up with live, like for these Zoom meetings these days, it really does complicate it. So, mm -hmm. and the last thing you want to do is crash and burn. Live. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's it's worked well for the, the first two the, uh, Photoshop events we did, and we're basically following very much the same formula. We're adding things where we can uh, to try and enhance the experience. But I think for me, the biggest factor is the educational value and the instructors that we have and the topics they're teaching and the, the effort that they've put into these videos that they've created. I think people will find that they definitely get uh, more than their money's worth, whether they decide to stick with a free pass or end up with the VIP pass. Sure. Now, at the end of the pro, like next or week after next, will you send everybody out a thank you for participating? And yeah, they'll, they'll one, one of the things that we do is as people are checking out the classes, it'll say, for example, this class is by, you know, Matt Kluskowski, here's his website and so on. Um, but I sent out email to all the participants 
among other things, with a summary of all the instructors in case they want to, you know, they, they might discover a new instructor they haven't seen before and want to find out more information about what else they teach. So there'll be a, a follow up with a, a list of all the uh, instructors as well as the information from the sponsors. And then even if somebody can't attend next week or maybe their buddy tells them about the, uh, the, the conference or the, the summit from next week, they can still tune in somehow or or still reach well, out to you for the, the only the VIP pass is the way to, to do that after the fact. And we're we basically made the decision to to for all intents and purposes, run this kind of as if it was an in-person event, meaning once the event is over, it's over. So it's not like, you know, in other words, the 48 hour period for the Friday classes and Sunday. So Sunday is technically the last day to watch this event unless you get the VIP pass, which of course means you have lifetime access. So the sure. sales of the VIP pass go right up until, well, I, I always say midnight on Sunday and then I realize I don't really wanna stay up till midnight to flip a switch. <laughs> so technically it's probably early Monday morning when I wake up is when the the, the switch is flipped to, to turn okay, off so the, the sales. VIP, the VIP pass is only available during the, during the summit itself then. Right. And then up to the end of Sunday. So the classes end Friday, but then the VIP pass could go, you could get it as late as Sunday. I see. Okay. Well, I, I, I guess Matt got tied up. I haven't seen him. Yeah, it seems like it. I tried to get in touch with him, but I know no. he was having technical issues with webinars yesterday, so maybe it continued. He's tied up with that too. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you being here this morning and us getting the chance to chat about uh, all this stuff going on with you guys sure. and everything and wish you great success with it too next week. So thank you. I'm going to I'm going to tune in myself and uh, just see what everybody's up to. And uh, I look forward to, to checking it all out. Look forward to it. Thanks for for the chat, Dave. Appreciate all it. All right. Thanks, Dave. See you all later right. now. Bye bye. Right. Now. Bye bye. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Kind of seeing behind the scenes how you put together a big production like this. I really wish him well next week when it kicks off, and I'm going to be tuned in myself, and I hope you will too. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.